In this module, we're going to be learning about HTML forms. And for this activity, we're going to be working with the Red Ball Pizza web page. Notice this is the finished product, and it has a form here. Now, forms are made up of a variety of things. Notice that there's a box and a label that's actually connected to the box. There's also lots of different controls. Now, these are the labels that are attached to the controls. So you see when I click on a label, it actually puts the focus on a control. So that's what labels do. Now, their controls are like text boxes where you can type things in. They're like drop-down lists where you can select something from a list. Check boxes where you can check or uncheck something radio buttons, lots of different kinds of controls. There are also widgets. Right? There's spinners that allow you to click up and down. And there are sliders that allow you to select in between, slide along values. There are widgets like calendar widgets. There are also widgets like um, color pickers. So lots of different widgets available and, and a variety of controls. So we call those controls and widgets that are elements within the form itself. Now the job of a form is to gather data. You know, usually we're gathering data from the user. And so when that happens, we can assign fields. So each of these controls are connected to a field and a field is what stores that value that the user input so that when the form gets processed, that value is, is part of that processing. So we have fields connected to the controls and the widgets, and then the form is processed. And it might be processed by, it might be processed locally by the user's computer if there's some code that's there to handle the form, or it might be sent to a web server and be processed on a web server. Either case, the data that's gathered from the form is sent when that form is processed. This is the beginning of the page. We're going to start with st the start code in the folder Red Ball Pizza, and you'll have to unzip the zip file where that starter code is, and then open up that folder in your editor. So whatever editor you're using, go ahead and open that up. This is what that web page will look like when we first get started. At this point, there is no form, and we're going to be adding that. So let's get started. In the file is an rb underscore survey dot html file, and this is where we'll be making changes to the web page. And we want to add the form. It's inside the body, inside the section called customer survey, but at the very bottom. So at the very bottom of this section, after the paragraph, we're going to add the form. And the way that we do this is with a form tag. And it's just form. And it's an opening and closing tag. It has an opening and closing tag. We're going to be putting a lot of things in there. And in this form tag, we want to add several attributes. So the first attribute that we want to add is the ID attribute, so we can uniquely identify this form that we're going to be using. The next one we want is the action attribute. And action, here we're going to put a URL to the server that's going to process this form. So this needs to be the complete URL, including the protocol, http colon slash slash www.example.com slash redball slash survey. All right, there's that attribute. The next attribute is the method attribute. Now the method attribute can be, let me get this down here. There we go. Now we can see them. The method attribute, we have a couple of choices. Uh, one is the get method. Notice these are all caps, which is kind of unusual, but the get method, what that does is remember that the form is gathering data and it's going to send it wherever it's going to be processed. And the way that the get method sends that data is through the URL. It just actually appends all of the field names and the values at the end of the URL. So it's very visible when it gets sent, everybody can see it. 
Uh, you don't want to send any anything private that way. But there's lots of times when it's actually really valuable to send it that way. So th if you want to show the data, uh, you can use the get method. The other method is the post method. And the post method uses a different data stream to send it. So it doesn't send it through the URL and it's not readily visible. And so you can use this one when under other conditions when you have secure data or when you don't want to share the information. So we're going to be using the post method. So notice there the attributes that we filled out, the ID attribute, the action attribute, and the method attribute. Now, this is actually just a pretend link. We're not, it doesn't really process this form and we're really not gonna do anything handling this form. We're just learning how to set it up. And so we're going to add a JavaScript file that will actually process it and just tell us if everything's okay or not. To do that, <clears throat> that script has already been written for us and it's in the folder scripts and we want to add that. So the way we add connect to a JavaScript, now remember when we're connecting to a CSS file, we use these link, uh, these link tags. But to connect to a JavaScript file, we use the script tag. And this is an opening and closing tag. And we're not gonna put anything between the opening and closing. In fact, if we did, it would be replaced with whatever was in the file contents. But we are going to put an attribute, and that is the source attribute. And here we're going to tell it where that JavaScript file is. Well, for us, it's in the scripts folder. So we're going to put scripts slash, and then inside that folder, we're going to choose this rb underscore form submit dot js. Now this script will actually, when the form is submitted, it will capture it and then give us some feedback whether it's been filled out correctly or not. And there, we've added a form. Now let's go look at the web page. And here's that web page. Let's refresh it. Notice that nothing shows up here. And that's because the form itself is really a container. And there's nothing for it to display. It's just going to hold all the form elements that we add. So we're going to add um, HTML elements for all of the controls and widgets that we want on the form. And as we add those individual controls and widgets, they'll show up. But the form itself is just a container and doesn't show up in the web page.